of our loving and ever-present God. Amen. So here we are on the other side of the election. And uh, there was there was uh, a victory, and then there was a loss. And uh, some of the victors are feeling well. We're all feeling a lot of different things right now. A lot of us are feeling a lot of different things. Uh, I, I I have been struggling with this, as we all have. And one of the reasons that I've been struggling with this is, or actually come, comes right out of these words right here in the gospel, that uh, that the, the nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be earthquakes and in various places famine and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. And we we just came through. I don't I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you, but, but I, I will just simply remind you that we've come through probably one of the most difficult electoral seasons that I have in my life experience. Now that doesn't mean they haven't been pretty rough in the past. I understand that, that in the uh, 19th, uh, sorry, yeah, the 19th century, I understand that, that there was some, a whole lot of stuff that went on and we kind of look at it in different ways now, I guess. But but if you look at the last of this thing, there are some... You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends. You know, some, some people feel that way. Some people feel that way, and I, and I wonder, and well, actually, I don't wonder, I'm pretty sure that if the election had gone a different way, then there would be people who feel that way. <laughs> it's the nature of this thing that we have in this world. It's the nature of who we are. This gospel was written in, oh uh, gosh, we don't really know, but we think it was probably about 80 years uh, after the birth and life and death of Jesus Christ. It was written after the year 70, nice round number to remember, because I'm approaching it very quickly. <laughs> it was written in, in about, uh, well, after the year 70, the temple was thrown down. The temple, and, and let's be clear, that temple was not the temple that was built by Solomon, and knocked down in 586. It wasn't that temple. It wasn't that temple that was built again by the Ezra and Nehemiah crowd after uh, the exile was over, it's not that temple. It was a temple that, that Herod built. Herod, who was not a Jew, but who wanted to impress people with his religious fervor. So he did a, a great renovation, and I'm pretty sure that, that in doing this great renovation, he did similar to what people do in, in Northern California. They, they buy a house and then they obliterate it so that they can build a bigger house. And, uh, and make it shine on the hill. So that's what Herod did, and, and it was a stunning temple, and it was knocked down by the Romans, and, and people were fearful. Now tell me a little bit about fear. What is fear? Anybody want to have a go at that one this morning? Of the unknown. Of the unknown. Uh, and also, fear is something that comes when we feel threatened, isn't it? And, and there is no logic to our emotion. There's no logic to fear. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, if I'm being faced with a grizzly bear, and, and I can read, then it's pretty logical that I would be fearful of that. Grizz, grizzly bears, uh, as that person who wanted to live among them and found himself being eaten by a grizzly bear, would know that grizzly bears are not puppy dogs. They're, fear, they're things to be fearful of. And some of the behavior that we've seen over the past period of time, over the past two years, my brothers and sisters, we have reason to be fearful of that. We have reason to be fearful of the behaviors that, that, that have demonstrated themselves across the spectrum. 
And not just the spectrum of politics, my brothers and sisters, because I don't want to, we don't need to talk about politics today. We just need to talk about faith. The, across the spectrum of religious communities, my brothers and sisters, people have really been wounding in there in the way they've talked to each other and thought about each other and the things that they have done to each other. And so there is still fear. There is still anger. Oh my goodness, how much anger is still out there? How much anger has been resolved in your heart? Some people have been angry for, for uh, almost two decades. And, and just like when someone dies in our lives, just like when we lose someone that we care deeply about, the emotions that we have for that person continue. So we have the anger that people have brought through the, the, the years that President Obama's been in the White House. And, and now there's anger that has been alive and well over the course of this political thing that we, well, we call it political thing. And that doesn't get turned off, my brothers and sisters, immediately. <coughs> And when I leave here, the love I feel for you will not be turned off immediately. When I came here, all those many years ago, <laughs> back when I had to walk up hill to church, <laughs> through the freezing snow, and and then I had to walk uphill back home again <laughs> through the sleet. It's amazing that it was uphill both ways, but, but you never know. Uh, I, one of the things that I discovered about this community is that, that you all at some point over the previous <coughs> maybe decade had to come to terms with feeling radically different about the way things were done in this world and how, how your faith would be lived out. <coughs> that, uh, I don't have to tell those of you who were here, but some of you are, are new, and you know that there was pain and suffering. You know that, that through the course of the transitions between the way the Episcopal Church was and the way the Episcopal Church is now, and not just the Episcopal Church, but this particular church, we had, a, we had an individual who died in the office, in the, in the rector's office, during, during her act. He had a heart attack in the middle of a, of a vestry meeting and died right there on the spot. I mean, that just tells you how difficult it was in this community. And when I came here, the people that were here in this community, the legacy that was left and, and that I came to be a part of, y'all had made some important decisions. And one of them was that that rail, that rail belonged to God. And you were going to come to that rail, and you were going to stand at that rail, or kneel at that rail, and you were going to receive communion at that rail. Because that mattered more to you than the differences that you had between you and among you. I don't know if I've ever asked the question in this way, but why do you think I wanted to come here? I wonder if I've ever asked you that question. Why do you think I wanted to come here? I wanted to come here because I feel and I felt to them that you tell the truth to each other. Sometimes you're pretty harsh about it, but that's the nature of being in family together. But I came here because you agreed that in the church you would be together. And being together, you can do things, you can build things, you can rebuild the temple, you can move mountains. We are promised that in our scripture, aren't we? You can do that. We have been together, and you have changed me. 
and that I have changed you. We have changed each other. And it's important for us when we when we look to the future to recognize the value of those changes. Some of them, maybe not. Some of the changes that I have perpetrated upon you, I say it like that because maybe they're not the best for you. But one of the things that we have talked about for the whole time that I've been together is about this thing called love. And it's not, as we have said before, it's not about bringing flowers, although that's part of it. It's not about just holding doors open for people, although that's a part of it. It's about looking at the fellow travelers that sit with you in a, a pew and, and recognizing how valuable God sees them. And, and when you see that someone is looking at you, acknowledging that in the eyes of that person, you have value, great value, abiding, long value, value in this creation. And that does not change when a rector leaves. All of us who are clergy persons are interims. It just happens that I'm going to an interim position in North Carolina, but even if I were here 20 years, I would still be in the interim because you are the church, my brothers and sisters. You are the church. God is creating you as a church. And when I go out the door next Sunday with Stephanie, God's not going to stop that. God will not stop creating who you are. God will not stop lifting you up. God will not walk out the door with me and with Stephanie. Right after the service, next Sunday, when we get into Grab 4 with a trailer behind it, start out the door, right after that, in this place, in this place, you will be distributing God's largesse to people who who want it and who deserve it. You will be setting up the thanksgiving for people. You will continue to be creating God's realm on earth. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that. This is language of hope. This is language of change, but it is language of hope. I haven't told you today that I love you, but I do love you. I have always loved you. And I will always love you. I've already said thank you. I've already said please forgive me and that I forgive you. And I say I love you. Next Sunday, I won't be doing much speaking. <laughs> That's because I'll have a huge, huge bump in my throat. Remember who is the sovereign when we are fearful. Remember who is the sovereign when we suffer. Remember who is the sovereign when we worry. Remember who is the sovereign. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly hosts, Creator, Son, 